mistaken, where it talks about um, for this reason was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy. It. Yeah, that's First John the third chapter, verse number eight. First John the third chapter, verse number eight. He says, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Why did he manifest? Why did he come into existence? That he might destroy the works of the devil. Let me read that to you from the Amplified, verse number 8. He says, but he who commits sin, who practices evil doing, is of the devil, takes his character from the, from the evil one. For the devil has sinned, violated the divine law from the beginning. The reason the Son of God was made manifest, visible, was to undo, destroy, loosen, and dissolve the works the devil has done. That's why Jesus came. My question to you was, it, or is, if Jesus came to undo, to loosen, and destroy what the devil did, did Jesus complete his job? Was he successful? Because if he was successful, then the works of the devil have been destroyed. If he came to destroy the works, and if he was successful at doing his job, okay, let me say it like this. If he came to open the prison gate, and he was successful at doing his job, is the prison gates open? So if the prison gate is open, then why do we want to stay inside? <laughs> if he came to open the gate, and he did open the gate, then why won't we come out? Because the Bible says he came to open the gate. And we say we believe he opened the gate. Well, if he opened the gate, then the gate is open. Because one scripture says, I open gates and no man can shut. So ain't nobody shut the gate because ain't nobody big enough to, to, um, to, to, to shut. The Bible says, open up the gates, ye everlasting, and the king will come. Could no, if God opened the gate, can't nobody shut the gate. So that means that this gate been open my whole life. I think about some of the things that I have endured and gone through because I didn't realize the gate was open. I think about some of the, 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 the roles of the victim that I was or played in my life because I didn't realize that the gate was open. The stuff that I put up with endured because I didn't realize the gate was open. I didn't realize, nobody told me, nobody told me that I was seated in Christ Jesus. I was crying because I thought I was broke, because I thought I was defeated, because I couldn't find no way out. I felt helpless. It never crossed my mind that I was seated in Christ Jesus. And that what I was going through was under my feet. And that nothing by any means. I remember I woke up with my heart racing one night. And I, is this, is, am I finna die? Is this it? Because nobody had told me that I didn't have to be afraid anymore of sudden death. Somebody say, he, 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 you don't do that. You're going to catch a heart attack. I'm not going to catch you. <laughs> I can't die suddenly. Did I not just read it to you? Tell me this. Is God a liar? No. no. So if God tells me I don't have to be afraid of sudden death, should I be afraid of sudden death? If God tells me that death has been conquered, can I believe it? Yeah. Listen, you don't have to believe it with me, but just for my own life. Is it okay with you if I believe that my God has delivered me from sudden death? Yeah. I'm not telling you to believe. You ain't got to believe. 
me. If you want to believe that the devil can come and take you anytime, he can, he feel like come and take you. If you want to believe that you can drive down the road and get in an accident and just die, if that's where you at, if that's what you want to believe, then you go ahead and believe. But the Bible tells me in the Psalms of 91, verse number 6, he says, Corey, you don't have to be afraid of sudden death. Now, the same God who says that sins are forgiven is the same God who says death has no dominion of which one is he lying about? A lack of understanding is the same thing as unbelief. My people perish because they don't understand who they are. As a man thinketh, so is. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Jesus said, Corey, I conquered death. I conquered death. Death is, a, death is a conquered foe. Death is in the line. It's in the possession. It's behind you. It's conquered. It's chained up right behind the devil. Poverty is chained up right behind the devil. Sickness and disease is chained up right behind the devil. I know it don't feel like it. I know it don't seem like it. But if you just stand on my word, if you trust me, if you believe me over what you see or what you feel or what you're going through, you will see that what I said to you is true. If you hold your ground, if you don't get weary in what I'm doing, if you don't throw in the towel because it's tough right now, but if you hold my word, if you declare my word, my word will manifest in your life because what you're going through is beneath you. Amen. Oh, we, we, we have no idea what he's made us to be. Hmm. We're seated in heavenly places. He, we're, we're seated in heavenly places. He has given us all things that pertain to life in God. All of the blessings have been given to us. Everything. I'm seated on his throne. It's a glorious throne. Prosperity, peace, joy, all of these things is a part of the throne. Happiness. You gotta be depressed, you gotta be down, try, you gotta be run over and beat down by life. Joy belongs to you. You have the spirit of God in you. Wisdom. You need wisdom, you have it in you. He's giving you the He's giving you the blessing. He says, No good thing will I withhold from me. Any man like wisdom, he said, Ask me, I won't withhold it from you. You have wisdom. The Bible says in you, listen to this. The Bible says in you is the unction, and you know all things. You know all it doesn't you have the wisdom of heaven in you. He said, in you, is the, you have the unction in you, and you have no need of a teacher. He says, you know all things. Not with this mind, but with the spirit of life. The one who says, let there be, is the one that lives in you. What don't he know? The Bible says, the spirit searches the heart and knows the mind of God. That's what's in you. You have great wisdom in you. Well, I'm losing my, you ain't losing your memory. You, no, 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 you, listen. Oh, God. You have great wisdom in you. And it's not coming from here and there. It's coming from here. Greater is, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. I'm stepping on my next message. The Bible says in the book of Colossians, he says the great mystery has been revealed. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ was coming to live in man. Oh God! Just ah, just think. Oh God! Think about somebody moving into your house and they bring all this stuff. Just I mean, they bring. You got the door open and they just bring suitcases and boxes and all kind of stuff. And you say to your mind, Where is he going with all this stuff? He gonna turn my house. When Christ came into me, he brought all the glory. When he came to live in me, he brought all of glory. 
I got to spend my life unpacking the boxes that he brought into me when he came to me. Every time I get into the world and open a new box, I just, woo! What an awesome God. What a mighty God. What, what? When I read that scripture, I was studying, and I said, wow, you don't have to be afraid of sudden death. How many people, do you know how many people are scared of death? He said he became like man that he might deliver them who all their life was afraid of death. Don't do that, you're going to die. Don't eat this, you're going to die. Don't go over there, you're going to die. Don't go over there, you're going to die. We're afraid of death. He said you ain't got no business being afraid of death. Death can't come for you until your race has been finished. When you, when you study the lives of the Christians in the Bible, they didn't die until their work was done. Paul said, I finished my course. I've done what I can. I've done what he said. Amen. That can't come for me. I ain't done yet. I ain't done that yet. 